Today we're going to be talking about water supply and demand. And first of all, we're going to give a good definition for both of those terms. So the demand for water is what we call the need for water. And this is for various uses, everything from drinking to being used in industry. And it's otherwise known as consumption of water. So the more water that we need to consume, uh, the higher the demand. Supply is about meeting that demand for water. And that is about tapping various resources, water resources um, for that. So that can be anything from lakes, to rivers, to underground water stores. In terms of the amounts of water that we have on Earth, we know that it's a finite supply. That means there is a limited amount. And of this water, like this picture here, most of it is salt water. When I say most of it, as I've shown in this pie chart here, 97% of it is salt water. That leaves only 3% fresh water. So that's a very, very limited amount of fresh water available on Earth. Of that very, very limited 3% of fresh water, that is separated into different uh, stores, um, with most of it being in glaciers. Over 77% of it is in glaciers, so a lot of it is trapped there. Uh, next amount is in groundwater, which is about 20 2 to 25 percent and if we actually look at rivers very 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 um, little amount so less than one percent would be in rivers and even if we look at the atmosphere even less than that so it'd be less than 0.05 percent in the atmosphere in the cloud so as we can say see a lot of it is trapped in glaciers and not very much is um, actually in the rivers that we've been studying Fresh water is obviously used in lots and lots of different ways. Uh, these are the main areas in which they're used. So domestic use, that can include everything from cooking and cleaning to bathing, um, flushing toilets, um, all of the stuff, even up to watering your garden, that will all count as um, domestic use. Um, the next um, obvious one is agriculture. Here we've got an example of um, irrigation where you're irrigating crops, but it would also be used for um, drinking water for livestock. That would count as uh, fresh water use. Leisure, here we can see people are um, uh, kayaking uh, on a reservoir. Anything that involves fishing and sailing, um, watering golf courses, um, all of these are examples of where fresh water is used um, for leisure. Industry. Industry is one of those things where it's not just um, the actual production of the goods. So if I'm making a pair of jeans, uh, an incredible amount of water goes into making um, those trousers. But also things like cooling machines is really, really important. Machines obviously get very hot. And so having water to be able to do that. And obviously in this last picture, energy production, where we have got it to be um, used to make hydroelectric power. A big reservoir is behind that, allowing the water to fall through the turbines to create that energy. We can see from this graph here that the global demand for water um, has showed an upward trend. It is rapidly increased. This means the demand for water has gone up uh, a lot uh, since the 1950s. You might want to pause the video now and have a think of the reasons why this might have happened in the past 50 to 100 years. So there is four main reasons why the demand for water has gone up. The most obvious one is the fact since the 1950s, uh, the population of the earth has rapidly increased and with more population growth, you just have more people, which means there's more demand for water. More people need more water for everything from cooking to bathing to cleaning to the products that they buy. Second major factor is the rise in agricultural production. That is because we are needing to um, feed a growing population. And because we need to feed more people, but we've still got the same amount of land, that means we need to have more water for better irrigation systems. We're having to use the land we've got um, for to make more food, so we need 
more water for better irrigation to be able to make more crops to feed the growing population. The third major reason we can see very clearly on the graph in 1950s, that blue section doesn't take up a large proportion, but it's starting to grow quite rapidly by 2000. This is industrialization. As more and more countries around the world become industrial and start uh, producing lots of factories, which need a lot of water for goods, um, and to make them, then they will use more and more water. So we're particularly talking about MICs. And as we've said, this is factories that are having to cool machinery, but also having to use it to actually make the products. And also talking about producing energy using water. So HEP dams, having to have a large supply of water to be able to make energy. All of these add into that growth in the industrial use of water on a worldwide scale. The last um, reason to mention to show why demand has gone up is showing this green section, which again has grown more since the 50s, and that is domestic use. So the reason why we have more domestic use is rising living standards. That essentially means as countries and people get um, become more developed on a global sense, then they are able to have more things such as flushing toilets and washing machines in their house, all the way up to people that get super rich and they get to have swimming pools. All of these mean that more water is being used domestically. And so as standards of living go up in many MICs and LICs across the world, the whole world starts to get slightly more developed and therefore the use of water goes up as well. When we look at the consumption of water though, uh, on a global scale, we see that it's increasing. But if we look at countries that are HICs and LICs, we see that there are two different worlds of water. So the uses um, and the amount of water being used are completely different. Again, you might want to pause it here and see if you can think by looking at this graph, why LICs and HICs have different water consumption habits. So by looking at this top uh, pie chart, we can see that the most uh, dominant water use is in agriculture. And that is because in a lot of LICs, it will be mainly subsistence farmers, so people farming for themselves. And we can also see that both um, domestic and industry is low. And this is, again, because the countries haven't economically developed that much and therefore um, they haven't got a developed industry and people haven't got the disposable income to own things like washing machines or swimming pools or even um, in lots of cases uh, flushing toilets. And therefore they won't be using them for domestic use. Whereas we look at HICs, the first obvious thing to notice is that um, the domestic consumption is up. Um, the reason why domestic consumption would be up, because HIC is a very wealthy country, people have disposable income, and they have disposable income to be able to spend money on all those um, nice things like washing machines and swimming pools, but also being able to go to use leisure facilities like um, kayaking and on the reservoirs and sailing, which would again would use more water. We can see that industry um, is a lot higher, and that is because, again, the country is more economically developed, and so it's more focused on um, producing goods um, rather than just agriculture. The agriculture, again, has gone down from this 91% as LIC to 39%, and that is because we have um, less people working in agriculture, but also the fact that we've got a more, more efficient um, irrigation systems. So we have, over time, mastered how to make... Um, our water go further and so that less is needed in agriculture so we can use um, little to still produce a lot of crops. The last thing to note is that water is not um, evenly distributed on a global level but also on national levels and therefore we sometimes get problems. So we can see here in the UK in this area uh, at the bottom in this red area, this is an area of what we call high water stress. This is where the demand is very, very high, but the supply um, isn't, uh, isn't enough. So the supply is lower than the actual demand, which is very high. Up here, though, if you look in the northeast of England, um, it's yellow, it's low stress. And that is because um, the demand is lower but also the supply 
is higher. And therefore, so we, we get um, areas of the country which have enough water because the supply is very high and the demand is very low. And then other areas of the country where the demand, especially in those big cities, is really, really, really high, but we don't have enough supply. And therefore, we get stressed areas. So we're going to talk about how we can redistribute water in the UK um, in, in a couple of lessons time.